Hey everyone, and welcome to the last episode of Introduction to Python. I'm Thad, and let's get going. All right, so this entire course so far has been done in the style of what's called procedural programming. So what we've kind of been um, focusing on is having data and then doing processes on them, um, which is fine when we're working with small programs and if, and uh, other some languages like C work purely in this fashion. Um, however, when you start getting into larger, more complex programs, um, you kind of require a better organizational process than this. So object-oriented programming. I love this stuff. This this was like a, a revelation when I first started using it. Um, don't worry if you don't get it immediately because um, this, this kind of takes some getting your head around. Um, so we've been working with um, objects and we've been working with methods previously um, with like dictionaries or with lists and, and these sorts of things. So like list is an object and then the dot sort is the, the method. Um, so now we're going to learn how to make our own objects um, with our own defined methods. And this is the fun stuff. So the visual difference um, between the two is that in the original procedural um, programming, we would be focusing on, on the, the function primarily over here on my mouse over here, and then we would pass it the data and the parameters. Object-oriented programming um, wraps the data and the methods into the same object. So we've got the object and then the object will do something. Um, a class is sort of the abstract of what the object will become. So the class is the, the blueprint or, uh, yeah, blueprint is probably the best way to, to describe it. We've got a blueprint that we can make a bunch of stuff from. And so the, these classes um, are what defines how our objects work, what they hold, and what they can do. Um, so let's make a quick class for a possibility of a student. Um, so like defining a function, we have to define our class. Class is student um, by convention, um, the uppercase or the first letter of a class is um, uppercase and the first um, letter of a, an object is lowercase. So we've got our student. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define the initialization function, which is two underscores in it followed by two underscores. Um, if you remember previously in a video, um, I got a little bit confused over the, the whole self thing because I'm so used to working in um, object-oriented code. You have to pass the object itself down into um, the init before we can do anything. So if, if we've got a student, um, let's, let's think of some of the things that um, we might need. We might need a name equals something. We might need a ID equals something. Oh, um, when you're defining an interior variable within an object, it, it, it's um, classified as self.name because self is the object, so the object and its ID. Um, and we might want a score. So we'll set that to zero. Um, obviously, this isn't very useful. So what we, what we want to do within this um, initialization function, also called a constructor, is we want to be passing stuff into it. So if we pass it the student name, the student ID, and the student um, score, then we can, um, when we create the object, we'll, we'll be passing this information into it. So we would change this to become SVD name. This becomes SVD ID. This becomes SVD score. Um, so now when we create a student, um, We've got our um, student's name. 
we've got our student's ID, which will be 1, and we've got our score, which will be 78. Okay. And obviously not the new, because that's the wrong language. Um, so what's, what's happening here is I've created a new student. I've given that student these um, these options. And then what we can do is we can um, then access them by doing things like um, student one dot score. And we can now treat this like a normal variable. Um, we can have that equal to std one dot score plus five. I always use white space because it looks nicer. Um, and we, we can change the things that we want like this. Um, however, if we want to um, do this in a more object-oriented manner, what we want to do is we want to start setting up new uh, methods. So we want to get get score self return self dot score. And so instead of um, accessing the score directly, which can lead to problems of um, side effects and everything else, what we would do then is um, we could print get score. So let's see. Here we, is. Uh, we, we are. We've got the 78. Um, and we can go through and we can add all sorts of other things. Like um, we can add expressions. We, we can do anything that we can want to do in a normal um, function within the method, um, but the the method itself will act on the internal data of, of the, the class. Um, one thing that I'm going to point out is that you can add um, objects that you create yourself to lists. And that will be very useful to my Oxford students um, for their final assignment. As you can see, now we've got a list of length one, and that sorts that out. Um, so that that's sort of the um, the big the big introduction to classes. Um, I'm probably going to kick you to the book to read this more in depth. Um, but the the real takeaway that you want for for classes and object or object oriented design is that you, you want to group everything together as nicely as possible. I mean, all students have particular ideas that are associated with them and particular things that you would want to do with them. Um, the a course itself would have particular things that you'd want to do. Um, and they'd have share variables and they'd have shared um, or they'd have shared um, uh, data and they would have shared methods that you would want to do. So please read the last two um, chapters in object -oriented, uh, on object-oriented programming. Oxford students will get your mail. This is the end of the series. Thank you so much for watching it. Um, I'd like to do a big thank you for um, David Baker, my manager at the IT Learning Program, for supporting me in producing this series and um, encouraging me to give it out to everybody on the web. <coughs> so if you like the series, um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, a lot of people ask me what, what they should do next. Um, I've got another web series called um, Instruction to Perl, um, if you want to learn the Perl programming language. Um, and sometime in the future, um, I will be producing two more series, um, one on data structures, which is more ideas on how to um, code your programs so that they're more efficient and they run faster and run better. And then also um, an introduction to Java. Um, based on this series. So it'll be um, introduction to Java for Perl programmers. Anyway, thanks so much. And I will see you in another series of videos. Bye.